All right, you know, how's it going? So I've got a parcel here, and as usual, before we open it up, a little bit of a backstory of how I got the parcel. So I had a random message one day from somebody who does house clearances. I believe they're up in Scotland or somewhere. <clears throat> and uh, they come across what's inside here and didn't really know anything about it. Looked it up probably on the internet, come across me and my videos and said, do I want it? And I said, I will. So we negotiated a price, here it is. So that is pretty much it. Come from a house clearance. I know nothing about it. The person who sold it to me knows nothing about it. Let's open it up and see what's inside, shall we? So, I don't really know if this come from like, a house that was full of RC cars and this is just one of them, or if the person who had this, when they done the house clearance, just had this one. Um, they, they probably did tell me, but I don't know. All I know is, it is what it is, and it is what it says on this box. So, we should, hopefully, have a nice car that we can get running. Don't know, actually, whether it even come with radio gear. But, that we will find out. <clears throat> that looks like... This is the top, by the looks of it. So, cut it that way. Cut that tape down there. This is some strong tape. Proper gaffer. No, nope, that's the back. What way is that bloody... That's been cut, hasn't it? I reckon that's been cut. I want to try and save this box. In case you're wondering, why don't you just cut the box open? Well, I want to try and save it. So that when I sell this, I can sell it with a, a fairly intact box. Because, uh, oh yeah, this has been cut open before. Because boxes are important, you know. When you sell something, if you've got a nice box that can come with, that's, that's important. I wonder if we can slide it out. Hmm. Just gonna have to cut it. Just gonna have to cut it along there, I reckon. We can still use the box. There we go. I've made I've made a lid. So now we have a nice box. And it looks like we've got some egg egg boxes. Bloody hell. They're coming handy. They're coming handy. I'll better take them down to the uh, down to the chickens and fill up the old boxes with eggs. Be a lot easier than trying to carry them in a basket, that's for sure. Oh, nice. Egg boxes. Very handy. Kitty Campbell's. Oh, nice. Anyway, 16th of February. Bloody hell. Well, we've definitely got some goodies inside here, haven't we? We haven't just got a car. We've got a battery. Is this a receiver pack? We've got a receiver pack here. 1.2 volt. 1200 milliamp hour. Not bad. I'll have to see if this will charge up later on. Let's see if it's got any charge in it now, though, can't we? Probably won't have any charge in it, I wouldn't have thought. It looks a little bit corroded on one of the pins. Oh, there's a bit of corrosion in there, all right. Jesus, that's corroded. We'll have to clean that out, and then we'll see if it's got any charge in it. Um, <clears throat> HPI Trophy Spares. Came with Truggy. All oh, right. So this come with a Truggy. This, this could be called a Truggy, I suppose. What do we have? Oh, we've just got some bits. We've got suspension spacers. Yeah, it's all just servo horns, all plastic stuff like that. 
that'll, that'll be nice. We've got um, a battery holder, okay. That will always come with battery holders. Um, body mount set, Truggy. Got a body mount set here. A couple of body pins. Not, yeah, I call them body pins. Some people call them body mount. Whatever you want to call them. Oh, look. Got a nice long bit of fuel pipe. I like this fuel pipe. The blue stuff, I like it. It's one of my favourites. I do like yellow stuff, actually. I'm starting to go a bit colourful. I used to always go for this blue stuff. But I'm starting to go a bit colourful recently. For some reason. Oh, hello. Bag's opened up and a few screws are falling out. We've got some screws. We've got some servos. We'll have a look more in depth in the bag in a minute and see what we've got. Uh, we've got another thing here. What the hell is this? Uh, looks like we've just got some random. Let's open that up a bit. We've just got some random pieces of metal there. Obviously, they must have had some random pieces of metal. So. That's what I've ended up with. They're coming handy for something. Mounting, mounting batteries, mounting receivers, mounting all kinds of stuff probably. Two really small and short um, aerial tubes. Very nice. What have we got here? Uh, let's stick to some tape. We've got a glow starter. Quite an old one I reckon that one. And it's a type that you put a battery in. It's got a battery in it funnily enough. I don't know if it'll be any good or not. Who knows? My guess is that battery's probably flatter than a pancake, but we can always uh, keep it in there. In fact, oh, what did I do with them? Oh, I did have some glow plugs here, but I've, uh, I must have eaten them for breakfast this morning, so I haven't got them anymore. Um, what we got here? We've got one, two, three switches. So we've got three switches here for receivers. Nice. Can never have enough switches. We have here trophy bat tester cut off part trophy bat tester cut off part we got there so we've got a bat tester for testing bats we don't get many bats around here so well, just have to save it in case we find a bat i suppose uh, what we got here the end of the end of the aerial tubes very nice um oh, we've got um a charger for a glow starter nice you can never have enough glow starter chargers. Front steering fixing parts. So we've got front steering fixing parts here. We've got three bolts and three... Oh, I don't know what you'd call them. I know what they are, but I don't know what you'd call them. But there's three of them. Uh, what else have we got here? Another charger for a glow starter. Bloody hell, there's a lot of chargers for glow starters, isn't there? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of stuff in this box. Um... What else we got? Oh, we've got a packet of screws, a packet of bolts, some bolts, some are screws. We've got a packet of bit. They'll, they'll definitely come in handy. They will. <clears throat> we have here exhaust manifold spring with the size and everything there. That's um, medium size, I'd say, small size. That will come in handy um, for savages and things like that because you can stretch them and they're not, they go nice and tight. Very nice. A little bit more fuel pipe in there. That one feels like it's gone a bit hard over the years. Probably quite old, that one's a bit brittle, that one. Uh, what have we got here? we got some clutch. Got some clutch shoes there. Uh, an Allen key and some bolts. Nice. God, there's a lot in here. Three glow plugs. Very nice. They always come in handy, glow plugs. 1.2, 2 volts. They look quite old, actually. New Jersey. Come away from New Jersey, have they? Fireball. Fireball glow plugs. They look old. I used to get them coloured black ones bloody years and years ago. I wonder how old they are. Um, what else have we got here? We've got some random wires. Perhaps they're servo wires, maybe. Or maybe you can use them for other stuff. But um, they look like sort of, they look like servo wires also. Um, receiver battery packs, things like that. And the extension cables and whatnot. A packet of plugs. So we've got a packet of plugs there. So this is for if you're making up these wires to put on the batteries or whatever. There's the plugs. So you can make up whatever ones you want. Time for a bit of a drink. It's always interesting when, when I get 
you know, things like this because you never know what it's going to come with. I mean, I thought I was just buying a car, but it turns out I've got a whole ensemble of other bits and bobs that come with it. And it just makes it brilliant. So we got some RSP Blacksmith products. R clips. Very handy. Stick them in the R clip box. Bloody Jesus. Have you seen the size of those R clips? Look at them. They're massive. They're coming handy. Everything comes in handy, you lot. So we got here HPI front hub carrier. So we've got a front hub carrier for for what? I have no idea. I don't know what that would fit on. It doesn't really say. It just says front hub carrier. If I put in that part number, it'd probably tell me what it's supposed to fit. Uh, what else we got here? We've got loads of stuff. Look, battery tester. That will go in the battery tester drawer. Got loads of battery testers at the moment. They seem to be the the hot thing. Old HPI trophy pull start spring popped complete. So we've got a pull start for a trophy truggy. The springs come out, but everything is there. So I could potentially put that back together. Me and pull starts don't really go well together. They tend to fly across the room. Uh, this looks like a foul safe, is it? Is that a foul safe? It is a race guard micro dynamite made by dynamite and it's a race guard micro. I've never seen that in my life, so I don't know what that is to be honest with you. A race guard, you lot out there will know what that is and you'll be shouting. I've got a one way bearing, um, I've got a piece of steering, don't know what that would be for. Maybe a savage, looks like possibly savage. Hmm. Uh, we've got a charger for something or another uh, nine volts so it's a nine volt charger for something uh, what else we got here? we've got a bag and in this bag there is oh it's a battery case a battery holder for holding a nine volt battery these always come in handy it doesn't look like it's ever been used these come in handy for little projects. Um, I used to use a lot of these when I was doing a lot of ham radio projects, you know, making little things, antenna analyzers and whatever. See, we've got an on and off switch on the back there. That's very nice, isn't it? I like that. You can really use that in RC. What you could do if you've got lights and things like that, you could stick it underneath the body shell and stuff if you've got um, lights to go in your RC car. But very nice. It's supposed to have an LED there, perhaps, but it's not in there anymore. Um, We've got here a bag and it's got in it a servo. Futaba 83305 servo metal insides. So this one is a Futaba. I've got a Futaba servo there. We can test this. I've got a servo tester. There's a servo tester, just a basic one. We can test this servo later on. Probably not in this video. But I'll probably what I'll probably do is a video testing everything in here. At one point, so we've got a few Taba servo, very nice. Uh, what else we got here? A new HPI pull start Savage. So we've got a brand new HPI pull start there, Savage. Um, if it is brand new, it's never been used, but I'd say it probably has been used because the string looks a bit dirty. But it's a working one, nevertheless. We've got some uh, R clips, a spare complete body R clips, and Curs. Don't know what that. Oh, the covers. That's probably supposed to say covers. Covers, eh? Mm, nice. Yeah, then ones are attached so that you can't lose the R clip. Very nice. I like that. Uh, what else we got here? I don't know where this person got all these from. I don't know whether all this stuff come from the house clearance or if the person I bought this from had all these bits and bobs so they chucked them in the box. I genuinely don't know. After they posted this, they sent me a message to say, it's been posted, lots of goodies in the box. Whether that means that they was with this when they found it in the house clearance, or if they've just put them in the box because they, they don't want them anymore, I don't know. 94 millimeter center shaft. So we've got a drive shaft, and it says center. So it's obviously the, um, the center drive shaft for something. I don't know what. More R clips, very nice. See, that's the thing, all this stuff adds up, and I build up a collection of bits and bobs, and when I need to fix something, I've got everything I need there to fix it. I've got another packet of screws, genuine HPI ones, by the look of it. Uh, what else we got here? More HPI screws, and we have a rubber O-ring in there as well, very nice. 
HPI Trophy Spare Body Pins and Covers. There we go, we've got more R clips. They're the fat ones, they're the big fat ones that you get on a Savage and things like that. They're the ones you want, not the little skinny ones. With a lot more in this box, you know. Ah, what else we got here? Shaped exhaust gasket, 21 size, two pieces, black. So we've got 21 size exhaust gaskets. They will always come in handy because, you know, they do wear out, they get hot and cold a lot. You know, they, they become brittle and they start to fall apart. I've got a small collection of these and adding more to them will always be good. They're, you know, they're, they're like a, a wearable, consumable part. Two more one-way bearings. Uh, we've got another exhaust gasket. Looks like there was two there as well, 21 size. But they've somebody's had one of those for dinner one day, so one of them is missing. Oh, we've got an exhaust in here. Oh, very nice. This looks like a Thunder Tiger exhaust, so I wouldn't say this was an exhaust from HPI. It might be. It looks like a Thunder Tiger exhaust. It's just type of style that you might, might find on the Thunder Tiger. Let's have a look. Take that bubble wrap off of there. Oh, it's not. I don't know what that exhaust would be from, or even for, to be honest. I'm not. It's obviously a rear exhaust, I would imagine. Could be a side exhaust if it's a side exit engine. If anybody is familiar with this exhaust here, and you can tell me, is it uh, like a, an upgrade, an aftermarket part for a car of some description, or is it a standard exhaust off of a car? Because I don't know. I've, I can't. I couldn't tell you. You know, my knowledge does not reach that far, but nevertheless, it'll come in handy one day. We've got little things for the top of aerial tubes and end of car preppers and whatever else. What else we got here? Exhaust gasket, five pieces. Ah, they always come in handy. Got a small collection of those, and now I'll add more to them. So, exhaust gaskets, because they always rip. When you take them off the little T15s and the G, um, oh, well, the G3s or whatever they are, GX12s. They always split and rip. A little packet there of Allen bolts. Bloody as handy as you can imagine. Ah, uh, Fly Sky Remote. So this is a Fly Sky Remote, apparently. It's not. It's a um, binding plug for a Fly Sky. It's just a bind plug. We've got a whole bag of the little exhaust ends that people put on exhaust to deflect the um, the nitro and the fumes a whole bag of them nice um what else have we got here something stuck in the top of the car hpi firestorm original polestar so that's the original polestar that come on a firestorm with a screw as well very nice uh, we've got loads of tires here we've got some buggy tires not bad condition glued quite badly but glued um, another one here different one that looks like it's off a truggy or something like that don't know what that's from um, another wheel here it's the same one as that one we'll put that over here uh, oh, more wheels in here same as the first two yeah we've got wheels all over the place more wheels here look jesus christ man they're the other one. So basically we've got two sets of wheels. Yeah. Um, two sets, uh, sorry, one set of black ones, one set of crimey colour ones. Um, another bag here, another bag there. We've got some, these are little things that go on the end of our clips so you don't lose them. A bit of fuel pipe with a fuel filter on the end. Very nice. Got a small little collection of bits and bobs here, that's for sure. What have we got down here? I'll get that, let's get the car out. Let's get this car out of here. Right. What they've done is they've taped the car into the, taped the, car into the box. Um, oh. oh, we've got more stuff falling out. Look, more stuff falling out in the bottom of the box here. Jesus, we've got another, another servo. That's a HPI servo, that one. It's a HPI SF1 servo, plastic. Right, let's... Put the car over there a minute. Let's sort this out. So I've got a battery here. Oh, that's no good. That's had it. That's no good at all. JP 900 milliamp, 4.8 volt. This would have been an old receiver battery at some point, but I would almost definitely say that's not any good. But just for fun, we'll measure the voltage on that in a minute and see if it's actually got any charge in it. Probably not. 
What we got here, we got a micro fail safe. So this is a very old style micro fail safe. We're talking old now. We're talking more than 20 years old with that, more than likely. A um, little bit of fuel pipe. A small scale fuel pipe, that is. Feels quite brittle. Um, another battery holder. Uh, we've got some bits and bobs. This is the genuine kit that would come with a HPI car, whether it come with this one genuinely when it was new, I don't know, but it's still sealed in its packet. You've got the little spanner, a couple of uh, uh, Allen keys, and your little bits of plastic there. They come with the kits, uh, with the cars, sorry, when you buy them brand new. And this is the Firestorm 10T 2.4 gigahertz radio system. This is um, the manual for it. 2.4 gigahertz. I didn't realise that. I thought they came on um, 27 megs, the Firestorms. This must be a newer version because I always thought Firestorm was on 27 megs. I didn't realise they came out before, I mean, after the 2.4 gigahertz stuff was becoming popular. So, other than a couple of screws, that's all we've got left in this box now. So, we can stick the box down there. I've got gaffer tape stuck to my feet. Um, this is what we've got, a car stuck in cardboard. Let's pick that up, get rid of that. Look at that. This looks like quite a nice little car. You've got one of those silly little things on the end of the exhaust there. I don't think they're any good at all. I don't know why people put them on. Um, I know they deflect the nitro from going on the wheel and making a mess, but um, I don't know why people put them on. This is supposed to have been Apparently, the description was not run hardly at all. Um, and looking at it so far, I would agree. I mean, we're, we're getting to close-ups in a minute. But I don't reckon this has been run hardly at all. This is lovely. All the, the tyres still got... There's no wear on these tyres whatsoever. Let me, uh, let me show you a bit closer. So look, there's nothing. All the tread isn't even worn on these tyres nor is it on the front ones there's no scratches on any of the body anywhere whatsoever all of that is i can't see on my screen because the screen on this camera is all it is is just a load of mushy color that's all it looks like night vision but all weird so i can't see any of it what it's looking like on in camera but in real life it's it's spotless complete it looks like it's been polished What's the underside like? Oh, it's been run a few times, look. There's a few scratches there, so it has been run. We do know it's been run. You know, a few times. There's a few little scratches there. It looks like it's got a roto start on it. I've, been just, I've just noticed that. Let's take this R clips off of there. Lovely, look at that. Shell. What's the inside of the shell like? It's got a little bit of dirt in there. It's definitely been run. It has definitely been run at some point. <laughs> okay, we've got another one of these batteries. The person who had this must have liked these old style batteries. For a bit of fun, oh, maybe I won't. I was going to see if I'll char I can charge it up, but I don't think, I think that battery's had it, to be honest. That air filter. Oh, man. If I weren't going to sell this, I would have that air filter. Because that, that is one to, that's very, very desirable, that air filter. It, it's obvious that the person who had this um, looked after it and they obviously liked it a lot. You know, they obviously cared for it because you've got all the little things on your R-clips there. No scratches on it. They put in a little primer with a filter on it. They could have looked after the air filter. It's all very positive signs so far. Um... You've got little things on there, on and off. Oh, it's got a battery in it, and it's got some power, because that just flashed then. I wonder what type of battery is in there. Probably AAs, but maybe it might be a battery pack, and it might charge. All of this looks absolutely brand new. Look at that. That's brand new, isn't it? This must have... Ew, HPI SF10W waterproof servo there. I don't know what the steering servo is can't quite make that out I reckon this was literally bought 
ran probably two, three times, probably out on the street outside this person's house maybe. They've done a few modifications to it, like put that on there, little wire clips. They probably just like to play with it on the dining room table, for example. Cleaned it, and it probably never done anything else. I don't know how old it is. I don't know if this comes as a date, 2013 perhaps. I could be wrong. I don't know. You proper HPI geeks. I know there is some HPI geeks out there. You lot will be able to tell me probably how old this is. And probably even the whole specification of it. But the tank looks like it was drained before it was put in storage, which you rarely get. Because there's not even a drip in there. It's had a mod it's had the a rotor start. Some people might call it an upgrade, some people might not. I'd say it's probably an upgrade. Luckily I've got all the equipment I need for a roto start, so we can sort that out. I might have to power it from a drill though, because I haven't got any batteries anymore for a roto start. Damn it. I changed all the connections over the other day. Nice. Well there we go. Let's put you back on the on this tripod. We'll clear all of this and all of this off the bench. And uh, we'll see if this runs. Yeah, and then what we'll do is we'll see if this runs in this video now, and then the next video we'll go through all these bits that come with it, and you know, and go for it properly, and uh, work out exactly what we've got. But for this video, so it doesn't get too long, we'll see if this will run, and if it will run, that'll be great. If it doesn't, we'll have to do it, get it running somehow, won't we? So here we are, back here again. So I have got, I've got quite a few of these, but I don't know where they've gone. So the only one I've got is this old one that I've managed to find. Um, this old roto start thing. I'm going to have to do it with the drill. I have got the actual roto start. I've got a couple of them, the actual things. But the only trouble is I haven't got any batteries because um, I put those connections on these on the batteries, and obviously the roto start has a Tamiya connection, and I can't change it over. So mess myself up there a little bit but i don't use roto start all that often so what i need to do really is get a battery oh, i might be able to do it have i got i'd rather use a roto start if i can i think somewhere i've got that but that's not any good is it that's a deans that's a deans i haven't got any that are deans the only thing, the only ones I've got, I've got the XT60s on. So I'm not going to be able to do it. I need one of them with an XT60 on it, really. But it's Dean's. I haven't got any batteries that got Dean's on the end of them anymore. Oh, well. So I'm going to have to use a drill, which is not the end of the world. It's perfectly fine. Let's have a look to see what batteries in this receiver. Oh, yes. I thought it might be. And it had a little bit of power in it. It's, an, it's a nickel metal hydrate, 6 volts, 2 to 3 amps. 1500 buggy so we have got a little battery pack in here and it had a little bit of power in it because when I switched the switch uh, It's not going to be any good though It did have power in it But there's a bit of corrosion on the top there Don't know whether you can see. I can't see the screen I really need to get this camera fixed or buy a new camera, but I just can't afford to at the moment So you'll have to deal with it, but I can't hopefully you can see that there's a bit of corrosion there that means the batteries have been leaking, so it's not any good. There's not any point trying to charge that, really. Later on, when we do the look through on the, the box of all the bits and bobs, I might see just for fun if there's any voltage in there. Um, but I don't know whether you lot saw it. When I flicked the switch earlier on, the light flicked on and then went straight off again. So there was a little bit of electric in there. But all the potentials leaked out, I reckon. Hopefully the rest of this buggy or truggy has potential left in it uh, right let's see is the air filter any good has it gone no nope. the foam the foam's still good always check the foams because over time they do perish and they crumble and fall apart and the last thing you want is to suck that in definitely don't want that um, let's stick a little bit of nitro in there got a little bit of 16% in this bottle here. I reckon that'll do the trick. We'll stick that in there. Tell you what I haven't done yet. What I haven't done in my haste, my excitement, <laughs> is to see if it even turns over. So let's get the roto start stick thingy and we'll see if it turns over, shall we? 
Oh, stiff. It is very stiff. I don't know if it's stiff. Oh, it is moving though. That's it. Went past the compression. There we go. It does go. It's just... It's probably got a lot of compression. I'd say this, this engine is probably really new. Hopefully it was run in properly, but we just won't know. Anyway, um, I would say... Yep, the throttle isn't stuck. Carburetor's alright. The fuel pipe is in a funny position. I don't know whether you can see that. That bolt needs to be undone. And then that needs to be coming out this side, really. Um, it's all right now just for testing it and for obviously it was run like that before but for my I think what I will do later on is I'll undo the 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 high-speed jet and Turn it so it goes that way so the pipe is on this side of the air filter and it's not kinked up against the head like that But for now we can run it like this because it obviously was running like that before uh, We need a glow starter Let me just get a glow starter out of my bag uh, We'll use this one. I charged it up fully the other day when I went out and tested that S-Works buggy. Um, bit of primage. Bit of prime for a good time. Open up that throttle. Don't know whether you could see that. Hopefully you can. Really I should zoom in a bit more when I do things like that, but I don't always think about it. Let's put the old Roto start in the end of the drill. Do it up. What way's it got to go? That way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we've got to go that way. Let's stick the glow starter in there and we'll just see if she's going to run. I mean, she'll either run or she won't. Let's see. Throttle there. That was nearly wide open. Jesus Christ. Here we go, you lot. Oh. I might not be able to use that one. Well, that ain't a good sign, is it? That ain't a good sign at all. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of compression there. There was a lot, but now there's not. <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't know it. All right. Let's, uh, let's see what this glow plug is doing. Get a pair of pliers out. This, um... Starting to get things a bit tidier in here, and then uh, you know, I do stuff and it gets untidy again. Then I got the wrong type of pliers, I thought they had better reach in there, but they're too bent. Right, these ones will get that out, lovely. Oh, it's definitely wet, it's definitely wet. Uh, dried it off on my jumper. See if it works. Oh yeah, she's glowing all right. Put a bit out of focus probably. I can't see the screen as I told you before. It's just a blur. But um, she's there. But the compression, it felt good to start with, but then it went down. I wonder if after run oil, if the person that had it put after run oil in it. And didn't do the plug up very tight let's see now hmm still don't seem right no, that don't seem right to me really Let's try giving it a bit of heat. Sometimes heat is the answer to all the problems. Not always, mind you, but uh, sometimes it is. All right. Well, that's nice and toasty now. Let's just quickly get an Allen driver 
and check these head bolts are tight. That was not as tight as I would have liked. Um, definitely come from a smoker's house, that's for sure, because now I've heated it up, all I can smell is stale tobacco. Right. That's that. Um, let's try this little primer thing. That works, look. That's cute. Anyway, let's see if the compression's come up now. Might sound a bit better. I don't think it's turned over fast enough, is it? Gonna go. There it is. Oh, it went. As you heard, it just needs to be. It just needed to be woken up. That's all it needs. That's what happens sometimes, they just need to be woken up. <laughs> open up this throttle a little bit, I don't open it too much because it will start to rev up quite high. Oh, I don't think the glow plug was in properly. Hmm. Oh, that just, the, to, the tobacco is really starting to come up out of it now. The stale tobacco. Yeah. Definitely a heavy smoker. We ever had this car. Right, let's put that in there. Here we go. Let me get a glow starter that will stay on there and then I can use my other hand to control the throttle. Really I need it on a stand so I can rev it up but I don't have all the luxuries here, you know, I can't be uh, having everything. Right, now we've got a glow starter that will stay in there. I can use this hand on the throttle and this hand on the drill and away we go. Ready, it's gonna go. The tick over is set really, really high for some reason. Tick over for some reason the tick over screw, which is just in there. You see that one with the spring on the end of it there. It was uh, set really high. You often find this for some reason people set tick overs really high. I don't know why. Whenever you get like a car from eBay or somewhere like that, they all, more than often turn up with a with a um, a tick over that's really high. I don't know why people think it's necessary to put tick overs high. It's um, a bit crazy, you don't need a high tick over. It really it indicates that they're having problems with it running. So they hired a tick over up to, to keep it running. But all that does is mask a problem instead of fixing the problem.
had a few comments in the past from people saying that I have a terrible habit of adjusting carburetors before the engine's warm. Rule of thumb, you always warm the engine up to operating temperature before you do any adjustments on the carburetor. However, if it's running unreasonably when it's cold, for example, the tick over is way too high or something like that, it's perfectly fine just to adjust it slightly to get it running reasonable until it's warm and then you tune it, you fine tune it. So doing little adjustments like that, although it did conk out, um, it, it's, it's fine. You can do small adjustments with a cold engine to get it running reasonable in order to warm up, if that makes any sense. But we'll get it going again. We want it to a state where she'll stay running, really. It's a little bit too low now, I think. having trouble with the fuel to be honest um, yeah I don't think the fuels being pushed in properly Go in a minute. Oh, let's just hire that screw a little bit. Some of you are probably getting a little bit frustrated at this point, just saying, why don't you just hire the tick over to get it warmed up? I don't like them being too high when they're cold, man. Um, we'll get it going, though. glow plug could also be a bit of a problem um, it could definitely be a problem with the glow plug but I'll try this glow starter again
getting better. Don't forget, the tune might be a bit dicky as well. Colder weather, it might have been running the hot weather in the summer. And we don't know how often it was run either. So will. Let's see how low it'll go before it comes out. Oh ho ho. Now it does need a little bit of playing with, but that runs really, really well. Um, we don't know how long it's been sitting. We don't know, you know, we don't know any of it, you know what I mean? It could have been I probably could find out, maybe the person who done the house clearance may no, or be able to find out. They probably told me, but I probably didn't. I've forgotten or something. How long it was sitting, you know, before it, it come to me. Could have been in a in a shed somewhere for ten years or, or less or more. I don't know. But um, if that is a date and it is 2013, then you know it, it could have been sitting for a sort of eight, nine years potentially. You know, it could have been bought ran a few times in the summer that when it was bought and then sat for the rest of its life up until now you just you just don't know do you but it, that is a lovely a lovely firestorm 10t and uh you know it's in such good condition it's absolutely brilliant all the spur gear there's no dirt and mud and nothing up in there that's lovely the air filter's in brilliant condition i'll do it i'll move that pipe around there so it comes out on the other side of that no way, it won't be up against the head, and it won't be kinked as quite as bad either. I don't know why people don't do things like that when they, um... Because, look, he's gone to the effort of putting cable ties on there. I don't know why they didn't just move the pipe, but, you know, everyone each to their own, as they say, sort of thing. But there we go. Fantastic. So there we go. One HPI Firestorm. Um... 2.4 gigahertz. I didn't even know that they came in that. I thought Firestorms were all in the 27 megs era. I didn't even realise that they were that new. But there we go. They probably still sell them and that's just me being stupid. I have no idea. But if you want to see more on this, stay tuned because there will definitely be a few more videos on this coming up soon. We'll get the engine running properly so that it'll actually tick over properly, lower, and it'll run smoother. And uh, hopefully tune it a bit. I haven't got any transmitter for it. I'm assuming there's a radio, there's a receiver in there, I'm assuming. So I might be able to bind it to one of my HPI transmitters, possibly, if I can. Brilliant. If not, I'll sort some radio gear out. And I want to um, give it a bit of a test run. But, you know, this is, I will be selling this on. So if any of you lot are interested in it, let me know. And um, if it goes, it goes. But uh, we'll see, man, we'll see. But I can't believe that the tyres have not got any wear on them. Look at that. That's just that's just that's a, that's a cement off of there. Look. Um, look, look at that. It's brand new. Actually, it must have been run on grass. When they run it, it must have been in the summer because there's no mud and dirt, and it must have been on grass um, because everything's absolutely perfect. Even the front tyres. Look. Oh, that's just cement again. The cement dust coming off. Um, but absolutely brilliant. Can't believe it. And if you also want to see everything else that came with it um see what i actually got we'll see if we can charge up them batteries for fun and we'll see if um the, the servo there's a servo in there wasn't there futaba servo and the hpi server we'll put them on the servo tester and see if they're any good bits and bobs like that if you want to, if you're interested in that kind of stuff just looking through the box stick around because that'll be in a couple of videos time as well so i'll see you lot later on in the next video two or three whatever thanks for being here hope you liked it hope you enjoyed yourselves and uh remember treat everyone equally treat everyone the same because we're all just human beings you know so we'll have a nice happy life if we're all just nice to each other and put all our differences aside because everyone is different even though we're all the same cheerio you lot all the best